Welcome followers of O365A. Um, on today's uh, uh, session, we're going to talk about e-discovery and Copilot. And specifically, we're going to look at using Purview to do an e-discovery of Copilot interactions, and um, which is right across uh, Copilot's integration with all the M365 apps and the standalone BizChat app. So uh, Habib, why don't you kick us off and uh, show us Purview and some of the searches you can do in uh, for Copilot interactions. Yes, for sure. So let's go share my screen here. Okay. You guys good? You can see it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so uh, as Kurt uh, mentioned, uh, with eDiscovery, uh, you would now have the ability to search for a user's co-pilot interactions, um, whether, you know, whatever sort of application that they are particularly uh, using. So um, Dino provided this uh, link here that uh, uh, you know, provides an article about purview and certain things that you can do from a case and an e-discovery perspective. But when you're looking at specific uh, sources or data sources for Copilot, uh, if you're looking in these particular M365 applications, this is the um, item class if you're going to be using the KQL editor to do that. But obviously with Purview, it does have a nice GUI interface that sort of translates um, that to KQL. Um, so you have all these different um, uh, Microsoft Copilot data uh, locations. So for eDiscovery, um, one thing that I would mention too is that they're going to have a new view if you're not familiar with it now. Um, but essentially you just go to the settings in Purview, go to eDiscovery and then user experience and say show both experiences. This will allow you to see the new experience that's coming and the previous experience uh, or the existing experience today. So if you go just back into eDiscovery, so you have the ability to do three different things. You can create a standard case, uh, a premium case, uh, which is E5 and standard is E3. And then you can just do a content search and the content search searches for items um, in the current state. So as an example, um, if I had an e-discovery case and you know Curtis was on a legal hold with E5, then I would uh, place him on hold. And if Curtis went and deleted any of the co-pilot interactions within his Teams client or went to his M365 profile and deleted all his interactions, all those interactions would still uh, show in the e-discovery case, but it wouldn't be visible to Curtis. So same same um, process applies for Copilot interactions as it does with any other uh, Microsoft 365 applications such as email, Teams, chats, OneDrive, SharePoint, etc. Right? Um, and then I can go back and look at all the historical things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a content search. And I have already created a, a couple, but um, I'll create a net new one just to show you sort of what it looks like. And then I'll show the existing one that I've already created just in the um, uh, essence of time here. So we're going to just create a, um, a new one here. We're just going to say, OK, uh, oops. Copilot interactions, you can give it a description if you like. Um, uh, you can search for specific locations. And here you can say a query builder or KQL. This is the old view, right? Where you can say, okay, query builder, I can say add conditions. Usually what I like to do, at least to start, if I'm not filtering on those specific items, I can say type. And then in here, I can I can go into add, remove, and, and then um, within this, I could search for. Uh, ba, 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 does it have the copilot in this one here? I don't think it does. It's oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, just a big list there. Okay, so I select copilot interactions, and you notice here it automatically builds the KQL for me. Uh, in which it runs in the in the background, and then I can click submit and then create one. Right. The other alternative is to use the uh, the new way, which is content search up here, which gives you a bit of a different view. So when you create a, a view here, we can say uh, 
So the view looks a little bit different. And you notice here, it, it's kind of like a bit of a workflow that you're walking through. So I'm going to do a search. I can place things on hold if I want to. I can put things into a review set. Uh, and then I can export the data. So in here, this is the content uh, builder. Uh, in here, I'll delete the first one, which always defaults to keyword search. So I can say copilot type contains um, copilot activity from the drop down list. I can say add conditions and I can say date, you know, before or after, uh, you know, these this criteria. And then in here I can say add sources and then I can add, you know, all sources, mailboxes, SharePoint sites, etc. if I want to, uh, and then run the query. So I'm going to just flip back to another uh, one that we've already uh, created before, just to show um, you know the content that's inside there. You guys have any questions on sort of what we're well, as I'm going along here? What was interesting was on the website listing where the repositories are of the data, and so like something like Facilitator has a new line, but I noticed when you use the legacy builder it didn't reference that. So it's going to be interesting as as we get Copilot in, in more apps and, and more scenarios, you'll have to edit your, your queries to, to make sure you're covering the new locations. Yeah, for sure. And so this one here, if I can go to here, if I go back, usually it should pull this out. Yeah. So you notice here, it actually says star, right? Which, which should be able to pick up any of these Ones that here. was in the the new builder, right? But I think the legacy one when we Correct. saw the KQL, it was it did yeah. reference it, yeah. Correct, yeah. And then here I add my source. I can say in my Exchange or my OneDrive if I had any interactions there, uh, and then run the query. And then when I, once I run the query, then it will create a list of uh, statistics. Kurt, you have a question? Oh yeah, just a super quick question. I should have mentioned this in the intro. I think this is top of mind for organizations because as they enable AI. In their enterprises, there's legal concerns about Gen AI, about who's using what, what's coming back. Uh, did I see, and I might have missed it, or if if an organization's concerned about a query on a specific subject or interested in what users are interacting with Copilot on a specific subject, was there a keyword? Could you search on uh, a yeah, specific yeah. keyword? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can okay. you can select um, you can build your query to say okay. This is the keyword that I'm looking for. I want to search in Copilot interactions, and I want to search within this date range because maybe there's a legal action that they need to look into just specifically for that range. And then you would be able to get your sort of metrics, sample data, uh, and then send that to either you can export directly from a search now, uh, <clears throat> which um, will allow you to do that, or you can say, I want to add it to a review set in which I can even scale down um, the export because maybe I don't want to include everything that it actually pulls back so I can redact specific information in the review set and then process that to the to the export and then provide it to the legal team. Got it. For, and, and that search, does it cover both the copilot prompt and the response? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, I'll, and we'll show, I'll show some examples, I think, Dino might also have a, an example on his side as well, too. So it, it comes in here and basically says, hey, there's this many matches in one of the two locations, so likely from just my Exchange mailbox, not from my OneDrive. Uh, partially indexed items have uh, you know, 461. Um, gives you, you know, locations, right, where, you know, certain PowerPoint, uh, chat, Word, Copilot, um, I think this one might be just the total aggregate of all of them uh, because it's for the user there. And then once you're happy, like everything is cool, you can come in here and say generate. There's actually a button that will say generate a um, um, a sample. And then in that sample, you can say uh, how many items that you want. So by default, it's 10. Uh, per sample per location to generate. And again, this is really just to provide you an idea if your search and your query is working properly so that um, if it is, then you'll want to send that to a review set to look at the greater scope of the, uh, the query. So I'm going to scroll down to one that I was looking at before. So this one here. 
So this is the copilot in Word. So you can see here by the subject, I just said write a small paragraph on using single sign-on with on-prem Active Directory integrated with Enter ID and Enter ID Connect. Uh, and if I, I look at the response and you look here, the time, the date and timestamps should be equal generally, unless you're like in the portion where the minute is gonna change. Uh, and this is what the actual response was. So you can actually see as an administrator, I can see what the user had requested and what Copilot had rep replied back. But if you're using just the actual M365 chat in itself, uh, so here I was just, you know, uh, doing some testing uh, late last year, actually, um, right? Saying like, hey, I'm the IT director, I'm director of IT of ADATUM Corporation, create a project plan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then it comes back. And so the interesting thing is, is it actually doesn't show the actual response. There's actually a HTML message uh, that gets uh, attached to the dot message file of the email. So these are all technically email stubs um, that you would download and then open the attachments. Sorry, Dino, you have a question? Yeah, no, actually, I was just going to take it, take it from there and show you what that looks like because I yeah. went through the process because it's, uh, it's actually different. Obviously, with the M365 chat, you don't see it. So when you're in this view, you can't actually see the responses because you'll see just this with an attachment so here i said you know comms v next is coming up so i asked it to find the top rated restaurants and you can see that its response is just uh an email message so trying to go through this is not very pleasant obviously so i did an export and uh, of course i could add it to a review set but in turn i just exported to see what would happen and uh you'll get um basically a, a huge zip file that has all your interactions in there. And you can see here, it's actually parsed it out in a way that's a little bit better to, to review. Um, and so you can see that query I made and here's Copilot responding and with a few choices. And then I said, give me the top 10 results and it lists the top 10 results. So I think um, that's obviously gonna be a little bit easier. I haven't gone through the process of sending it to a review set. I assume that we're gonna see something similar in a review set, but at least here i'm not having to go back and forth in that that view i can kind of see something in an html format and so dino those are all the responses to that one prompt or your whole interaction session yeah uh it was it would have been for the whole interaction so um obviously i just had one follow-up and then uh, with the top 10 and then it had it but if i had continued going back and forth all of them would have been in there so i had two interactions with it and uh you know what are the top 10 and then it replied so if i were to every new chat you start if you hit the new chat button would be a separate file uh obviously it, when dealing with copilot i like to start a new chat because it, it has context with with the chats you're doing so sometimes it gives you strange answers if you were asking it about what tool should i use to do a specific task and then you start asking it about recipes you know it it throw it can throw it off. It thinks you may be talking about the same thing. So every chat interaction should be a separate file. And and when you open that zip file, you'll see them all listed by the query, what the actual query was. So you're going to get a zip file with hundreds of different, uh, queries depending on the date you selected. Got it. And uh, what uh, what restaurant did you choose? We. we <laughs> <laughs> it turns out we need to drive week. at least an hour to uh, to get to a decent restaurant. That's uh, not something we've already done over the past three years, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> so with uh, eDiscovery, of course, uh, how far back it goes is always the question. Um, for these co-pilot interactions, is that determined by an organization's retention policy? Yeah. Yeah, so if you have uh, retention to delete the chats, like um, user chats, which are tied to the Copilot interactions, then those chats and interactions are deleted on that. So I have a few organizations that have uh, interactions that are, you know, our, our team's chat messages are deleted every 30 days or, or sometimes even every 15 days. So with that, all the interactions are uh, also removed at the same time. And is there one retention policy that covers all Copilot interactions yeah. Or if it's integrated, say, in Microsoft Teams, does the Teams retention policy take precedent? 
Uh, it's the retention policy that's for Teams chats is the same one for Copilot interactions. There's no differentiator, there's no separate ones. So it's one retention policy that encompasses both the chat messages, um, and those are group chats or meeting chats as well, along with all Copilot interactions. Got it. I was going to ask, because um, I don't specifically have a retention policy in my tenant, so I'm assuming I can go back as far as I am keeping exchange data at that point. If I don't, oh, so if I don't delete, yeah, mine yeah, if was, I don't delete any mine messages. Was May though. last year. Mine was May yeah. last year, right? So I didn't, I didn't, I don't delete anything as well. So you can go back as as far back as you started using it. I'm not even archiving, so I think even for those that have archiving in place, I think it would still be able to grab uh, data that's been already archived to to your archiving mailbox. That's another test or interesting question we'll have to look at, but. Sure. All right, well, uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, as we talked about before we uh, made this episode, there are co-pilot interactions that surface in the native M365 audit log too, including power platform type activity, like creating a co-pilot bot, which could be of real use to organizations. So we'll cover that on a future episode. So. Thanks, uh, Habib and Dino, for that uh, demo. It was really useful, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.